coming up on Mountain News This Morning. A community here in eastern Kentucky is still disconnected from gas lines since the flooding in July. And the Kentucky women's basketball team makes a visit to a few eastern Kentucky counties to give away some items to the ones that need them most. Dedicated to eastern and southern Kentucky, this is WYMT Mountain News This Morning. Good morning, I'm Chas Gayhart. The time is 634 on Monday, September 12th. Let's go over and check in with Brandon. And Brandon's getting our Monday started out right. I'm trying. <laughs> it's an uphill task this morning, but we're yeah. doing our best. But I can tell you this, even if your morning is not the best, mm -hmm. your afternoon will be much better. And the week gets even better. Exactly. <laughs> so it only goes up from here including temperatures. All right, let's take a look and see what's going on this morning. A little bit of fog, a little bit of rain still out there in some areas. Satellite radar loop. That's the best way to show it to you because if we showed you Doppler, you'd think it was pouring the rain everywhere just because of the simple fact that it is basically showing a lot of green. Well, most of it's ground clutter, but there's some decent bands there just north of Prestonsburg and just north of um, uh, Sayersville, actually just east of Sayersville this morning, and then one crossing the border from Lee County into Breathitt County, and then one more down into parts of Leslie County this morning. So continue to watch out for those. And again, we're going to see temperatures sliding, but slowly still in the mid to upper 60s in a lot of locations. Southwest Virginia over there toward Clintwood and Wise, the exception, but those areas are in front of the front. Yep, in front of the cold front. You can see the temperatures already dropping behind it. Current temperatures across the region still 75 Myrtle Beach, 74 our nation's capital, but 56 Indianapolis, 57 St. Louis, 51 in Springfield, Illinois, where the Front has already passed through and we'll hopefully get that here to us pretty soon. Breakfast forecast, we are going to see dreary conditions this morning, maybe some sprinkles out there, but again, temperatures will drop through mid morning before they start to stabilize as the sun returns this afternoon. Chas. Thanks, Brandon. Pipelines running across the region burst during the flooding that impacted our region in July, leaving people without water and gas for an extended period of time. WYMT's Chandler Wilcox talked with people in Bulin that are still trying to get the lines connected again, but are facing an uphill battle. Over a month since the flood, some Eastern Kentuckians are still without gas to heat their homes. So we've got an issue. We've been there with no cooking resources, hot water, drying. Sharon and her neighbors have spent time living in what they consider primitive ages. It's been, it's getting close to the two months range and we need gas. The flood tore apart their gas pipeline, which was operated by Clean Gas and Knott County, and disconnected completely. What happened was the, all the service lines from their meter to our gathering lines were destroyed. Sharon blames Clean Gas for their long wait. I think 13 in total that they're not uh, trying to fix back uh, Weinberg says it is a liability for them to reconnect there, and the corporation statutes prevent them from building back. If we were to go in there and replace these service lines, then we would have the obligation to keep them up forever through any other floods. Plus, we would be legally liable for any kind of injuries that occurred as a result of the service line. Weinberg says they are still concerned about gas issues, not just in Buellen, but across the county as cleanup procedures have also led to pipeline breaks. And Beelan, Chandler Wilcox, WYMT Mountain News. Stidham says they have contacted Hazard City Hall in hopes of connecting with the city. Well, farmers are feeling the effects of the flooding across the region. At the Pikeville Farmers Market, some of the vendors have lost some or all of their crops. Not just to flooding, but the large amounts of rain have also drowned crops and made working in the fields much more difficult. Mark White of Burning Point Farms says this flooding has wiped out many crops across the region, but he is blessed he did not have any flooding. Once a field is flooded, that is no longer usable for commercial sale. You can't, you can't sell veg, fresh produce to the public if it's been flooded. So uh, that just wipes those, all that hard work down the drain and all that product's lost. White says people with small gardens also felt the impacts of heavy rain and now depending on farmers for their local fresh, locally grown produce. The Kentucky women's basketball team visited Letcher and Perry counties to give away items. 
The team started at Letcher County Central High School where they gave out shoes and then stopped at Perry County Park to give away books. Freshman and Eastern Kentucky native Cassidy Rowe says giving back to the community she grew up in means everything. I mean, it's been amazing to get to come here with my team, um, especially back to my roots, you know, Eastern Kentucky. This is why I wanted to come to Kentucky to be able to give back to my community. Rowe graduated from Shelby Valley High School in Pike County last year. From the loss of local police officers to flooding covering much of the state, Kentucky has faced a lot of challenges in the last month. But through music, a local band is hoping they can make a difference. Matt LaCritz talked with Troy Carlos Band about their plans for the future. Eastern Kentucky has faced a lot of adversity in the last few months. And for Troy Carlos, he says he can relate. Since he was 10 years old, Troy has been playing music. And after years of being told he couldn't succeed, their band is getting closer to their goals. Being born legally blind, sometimes people feel like they don't have opportunity. But I am a firm believer what you can conceive, you can achieve. But Troy says what he wants to do now is help those in Eastern Kentucky. From the recent flooding to the deaths of local police officers, he says all these have taken a toll on both himself and the community. And he wants to make a difference. So I want to use my gift um, to help people raise money for things in Eastern Kentucky, to help inspire kids, to help inspire people that may be disabled. I want to give back. I want to use the opportunity to help others. The Troy Carlos Band recently got a song of theirs on the Country Network and also got a chance to record a video with Dolly Parton's manager in Nashville. Troy is confident that all this will translate into a way to keep helping those in the region. I hope that I can use that to help other people and encourage people and just, you know, really inspire people to reach their dreams. The next benefit show the band is planning is next Friday at Alley on Main in Paintsville. That will be for the Animal Alliance of Eastern Kentucky. The band also has a show at The Bucket in Dunbar coming up on September 24th. The final Moonbow Egg Fest in Corbin was held during the weekend. Chefs from across the southeast participated making all kinds of food. Each dish had its own special twist, adding buzz to a culinary culture in the town. Corbin Tourism and Convention Commission Education, Edu Executive Director Maggie Monholland says the food opens people's eyes to new tastes. Although this was the last Egg Fest, she says three chefs from the town will participate in the World Food Championship starting next year. I know one person that will be disappointed that that was the last uh, Moonbow Egg Fest, our general manager, Neil Middleton, because he loves his, uh, his uh, what are they called, the eggs, the big, the, the big green eggs. Thank you, Dustin, our director, helped me out with that one. So again, some fog down that way in I-75 land in London and Williamsburg below the threshold this morning. Jackson over there at uh, five miles. So anything less than five miles on this map is dense fog. Also, temperatures still a little bit elevated in the eastern counties where the cold front has not gotten to yet. Plus, there's some scattered showers out there this morning as well. So be aware of those. Temperatures are going to go up into the upper, or not upper, upper 60s, lower 70s there this afternoon as we see the sunshine come back into play as those skies gradually clear going later into the day and it's going to be a fairly nice afternoon and lower dew points. That's the big thing we're going to see behind that cold front. Chas. Thank you, Brandon. The time is 642. Still to come on Mountain News this morning. President Joe Biden is set to discuss plans for his goal of cutting the amount of cancer deaths here in the U.S. by a significant amount. That's just ahead.